Hello again, I'm Wendy. Today we're looking at ideas for painting snowy woods and it's a watercolour tutorial. We're going to start by painting a wet into wet background and then we're going to put the trees on when that is dry. The snowy bank is painted very simply with some warm shadows and the suggestion of some foliage. And then the water again is painted wet into wet. I've done quite a bit of splattering with opaque white to suggest the falling snow. Towards the end of the video, I'll give you some ideas for producing some different compositions and using the techniques that I'll be demonstrating. As you can see, I'm starting off with very little drawing here. It's just basically the top and bottom of the bank that I've put in. I've not even put in any of the trees because we're going to put the trees in depending on how the background is looking. We're going to sort of slot them into some light areas, possibly. It's going to be a warm background wash, wet into wet. So I've mixed up some various washes here and I'm using burnt sienna, I'm using light red and I'm using ultramarine. So as you can see here I've got one to about four or five different washes of those. You could vary the consistency a little bit, maybe make um, one of them a little bit stronger, maybe that bottom one on the right there, that darker brown, that's a bit of a stronger wash. And also I've mixed up some Top left there, I've mixed up some ultramarine with light red, which is going to give us um, a contrast of that purpley wash there in the background and in the water. I started off by damping the paper down to the snow line. You could just use water. I used the tiny, tiny bit of um, burnt sienna in there, so it's hardly noticeable. You don't really want a burnt sienna background, you want that background. To be very light so it can sort of um, contrast with some of the wash areas so you're going to get some different tones in there. And now I'm dropping in some of those wash mixtures that I made earlier. It's always a good idea to get these ready. You can mix as you go along, you probably run out, but um, it's a good idea to get them ready. And what I'm doing is I'm really trying hard to vary the tones and vary the colours and especially to leave some of those light white areas showing through. It can be quite tricky because some of those colours are going to spread. So again it's practice and it's getting used to mixing up the colours the right consistency and the drying time. So um, if you watch my channel you'll know that I say all the time it's down to practice these wet into wet washes. So I've got the warm colours at the top and then I'm adding some of this purpley colour near the bottom. It's a nice, the colours go nice together and this purpley colour suggests some distance, some distant foliage or maybe distant hills possibly. Um, it's looking like foliage to me so we call it foliage. You can see I'm loading the brush when I'm putting the paint on. I've just got enough of that, just mix that enough of that um, purple up there. It's all still very wet, so I'm adding some darker tones in there. If you find it is drying out and you do want to add some more paint, then use a little spray bottle little spritz bottle to um, just put a very very fine spray on top and you'll find that will help and then you can add some more colour. There's a little bit of almost neat light red going in here. It's a lovely colour if you're not used to it it's um, it's not terribly red as you can see it's more of an earth colour um, like burnt sienna it's, it's sort of a mix between a I don't know, burnt sienna and a bit of red. A very nice colour and as I said earlier I, that's how I mix the purples as well so it makes a nice colour, light red and ultramarine gives you some very nice um, natural looking purples and mauves. As the wet into wet wash area was drying I put some of those very light loose shadow areas onto the snowy bank and I'm using very very dilute burnt sienna as you can see Marks are quite random, um, there's no particular direction or anything on this, no particular light source or anything, just the suggestion of a few shadows, possibly a bit of earth showing through, just some nice marks on that bank 
and you can easily get the impression of snow with watercolour by using the white of the paper and then putting some very light shadowy strokes on the top of it. I mixed up a, a darker colour now of the burnt sienna with a touch of ultramarine in there, using a little bit of dry brush and hitting and missing the paper to suggest some foliage. Those shadows still might be a bit damp but that's quite nice, it gives you these nice sort of watercolour effects in there. Now this is a nice technique for showing some highlights, some lighter areas on the trees. Um, I think some of you will be quite familiar with doing this. The paint has got to be at the right stage for making these effects. If it's too dry, there'll be no effect. If it's too wet, then as you're scraping out the paint, it will fill in these areas and you'll get a, a dark line instead of the light one. You may need to do this before you paint the bank, but I was keeping an eye on the wetness and um, I decided to leave it that little bit longer. I'm painting the trees with a mixture of the burnt sienna and the ultramarine and I'm using a rigger brush. I think it's probably a number two. A number two or a number three would work well here, I think. Now, what I'm trying to do is intertwine these um, trunks of the trees with the foliage. You can see now why I didn't draw these in or pencil the tree shapes in before I started. Um, they're quite um, random where you place them. Um, just try and have some closer together um, vary the tones. Um, you'll see that I did some trees that looked as if they were more in the background because I used more blue in the mix and that will give you this feeling of depth going in there. I did stress that it's good to leave some of the light areas there. Now you can see that working there because that tree is standing out really nicely against the light background and um, I suppose you could make that the focal point of the picture where you've got the light background against the, um, the darker tones of the trees in front. This wasn't planned, it was just making sure that I did keep some of those, um, those light areas there in the painting. Every painting you do like this is always going to be different clearly, so I could do ten of these and have the light areas in different places and place the trees differently and um, that's the fun of doing things like this. Now this stage will go on a little bit, but I thought you might like to see exactly how I do this and, and using the rigger. So I'll play you a little bit of music for a few minutes. I thought I'd break up that hard edge of the snow line there using rigor and a little bit of an opaque white such as a gouache. And again more rigor work for the grasses, just suggesting a few grasses growing on the bank, again using that nice dark brown with the um, burnt sienna and the ultramarine. I wanted to do the water quite simply because it's quite fussy above this picture and wanted to keep it fairly simple below. I'm mixing up that um, ultramarine with the light red for the water colour. That's suggesting that that background is reflecting in the water. Um, if we're thinking about the laws of reflection here, I'm presuming that bank is sloping backwards so that we're not getting any reflection of it in the water. 
Um, I will be doing more on water um, later on um, next later on this year. I haven't done very much on my channel on painting water, so I will um, remedy that, and um, in the future I will be doing some more. A little bit out of practice at the moment. So I'm painting the reflections in the water wet into wet. You can do hard edge reflections. I'm not a big fan actually. I tend to paint a lot of wet into wet soft reflections for most of my paintings. You can use plain water here or you could use a touch of burnt sienna in it as we did for the background wash. Now I'm holding the paper at a slope and hopefully this purple that I'm putting on will run down and suggest the vertical reflections in the water. Again, I'm trying to leave a little bit of space in there to suggest those light areas reflecting in the water. I'm not quite sure what was happening here. I wanted these strokes, these um, this paint to run vertically down, but for some reason it was going sort of every which way. I'm trying to remedy it a little bit. As I said, I'm a bit out of practice on water. I'll have to do some more. I put some more darker colour just underneath the bank and as you can see that's because everything is wet that's sort of um, incorporating into that first wash and it's running down not quite as well as I wanted I've got a few odd shapes in there but it will all be all right in the end hopefully Now here those reflections are starting to dry out. I did want to point out that I let the reflections go further down than the bottom of the painting. And this is a very nice technique for pulling out ripples across the water. Use a flat brush, and wash it in water and dry most of the water out and then drag it along through the paint. Um, you can see that I'm wiping some of the paint off and then dragging again so you're absorbing the um, the paint on there and giving you these nice ripples. Occasionally you'll want to wash the brush out again because it's going to be full of that purpley paint. You can easily get carried away with these ripples. Now I think this painting was just about finished. Um, apart from some uh, tweaking at the end and I was looking for a composition here. I think it's quite useful to use these pieces of paper. So this is what I decided on and then I did a bit of splattering with some white gouache or, or any other opaque white and finally I think I've um, found a better way of splattering. I've put another brush underneath the brush that I've got the paint on as you can see and I'm tapping it and this seems to work quite nicely. I'm sure some of you do this already but it's taken me a long time to realise this. I did get a bit carried away with the snow didn't I? You could put less on if you wanted to. What I decided looking at this was that I felt the water was too dark. I think it does work but I found it a bit overpowering that water so um, I'm going to show you a technique for knocking that colour back using um, a splattering technique. All I do is put some of the opaque colour onto a palette and then dip a toothbrush in and spray it with a toothbrush and you get a very very fine mist and it really can be very successful in um, reducing the intensity of certain areas of a painting. So this was my final picture. I did do a little bit of tweaking at the end. I felt the branches on that tree in the middle, that sort of focal point, were a little bit too short, little, looked a little bit too regular. So I just put a few longer branches on there. I also did a tiny bit of work on those ripples. I pulled them out a little bit more and I felt they were rather wonky. You want the ripples to be totally horizontal really and they were a little bit wonky so I just sort of straightened those out a little bit. With those ripples you can do that when the painting is dry. 
Use a damp brush as you did before, wash it in water, wipe it on a towel and you can accentuate if you like or straighten or even add some more ripples onto the dry paint. So I think they work very well on the water and I think in the end, although that some of those marks went a little bit astray, um, I think it works quite nicely. At the beginning of the video I said I'd suggest some ideas for different compositions using the techniques. Now I did a little bit of cropping on that picture that I did and I rather like this little crop here. If you wanted to paint without um, painting the water in there you could just do the snowy bank and put the trees in. Um, you could put some of those grasses in there as well which um, is quite nice because they're in the foreground and then they uh, there's a little bit of distance in there with those in the foreground then the trees in the middle and then the sort of the cool purpley more background colours. And another simplified version of the picture as well. I think this works quite nicely. And remember you've not got to have the portrait format. Um, paint the picture and then hedge your bets a little bit when you're painting it. Paint around each side, paint a bit higher than you might need, a bit lower. And then you can, as I did, use those pieces of paper to crop around your picture to find your nicest composition. I think when you're working a little bit experimentally like this, putting the trees on at the end, then that's a good way to work. I do hope you have some fun doing these. I really enjoy doing them. And again, I will, um, as I said, I will revisit the water and I will do a video on painting water, well, at least one in the new year. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. You can post pictures of your snowy woods in my Facebook group and there's a link in the description box. A very happy new year to everybody and happy painting.